Math 265A, Quest to College. I'm Joe Vesta, and we are covering bug 9. Suppose a bug is moving on a number line. At time t seconds, his position is s, feet from the origin. So we're going to do something a little different with bug 9. Instead of calling the function f of t, it's all right to do that, but instead of doing that this time, we're going to call it s of t. Now I believe the reason I was calling it f of t all the way up till now is because we were learning how to do the derivative. And we were already um, using t instead of x. And I didn't want to start off by saying s instead of f. So I wanted you to get used to the difference quotient, and this would have been a little more confusing. So now that we're maybe a little bit better with derivatives, you know, on this one we're going to call the position s, which maybe is what it should have been called from the beginning. Okay. So, let's take a look at something. This is a polynomial. And it, they're, they're asking us, okay, let's just see what they're asking us. Find the bug's velocity at t seconds. Find the bug's acceleration at t seconds. So oh, this is a new thing, acceleration. I may have mentioned it in another video. I may not have. I don't know. But um, let's talk about what happens when you take the derivative. Okay? So this is going to help us with all rates of change. Um, where's my blue pen? Here it is. And so I've got like a graph here, and we'll, we'll just make it look like this. And so here is the t-axis. t is seconds, and here's my s-axis, which is feet. Uh, go ahead and I zap this thing with the derivative gun. The derivative gun is d dt. Now, normally we're used to seeing d dx because the x-axis. Now, when that happens, I get a velocity function. So we're not going to, um, hopefully we won't argue about that. And the velocity function can be graphed. You know, when it's a parabola, when the position is a parabola, the velocity is a line. Well, when it's graphed, you have the t-axis, which is seconds. And then you have the velocity axis which is actually, velocity is not measured in feet anymore, velocity is measured in feet per second. So what I ended up doing, and when I zapped the position with the derivative gun, now my graph, instead of saying, you know, seconds and feet, it says seconds, feet per second. What it did to the y-axis is it, it changed this into a rate. It went feet over seconds, and it put it right there. So I'm going to say something that is, it's not even going to make sense. If this was, this axis was people, so the x-axis is people, and the y-axis is apples, I don't even know, why. maybe this doesn't make sense. So people, apples. When you take the derivative with respect to people, you'll still have people as the x-axis, but you'll have apples per person. That is what the derivative gun does. The x-axis stays the same and the y-axis becomes the rate. It becomes whatever's on the x-axis over whatever's on the... Oh, sorry. I, did, I said that wrong. Whatever's on the y-axis divided by whatever's on the x-axis because it's rise of a run. That's how we're originally getting it. So here is the cool thing. That when, I don't have room, I would go over to the um, right, but I guess I'm just going to go down here. When you zap the velocity function with the derivative, You're going to get a graph. Now, I'm not graphing the graphs. I'm just showing you what the um, axes look like. The x-axis is going to remain what it is, what it's always been, which is seconds. The y-axis 
Well, we're going to go like this. We're going to do what we did over here. We went feet over seconds and put it here. Now we're going to go feet per second over second, which means this is going to become feet per second squared. Now feet per second squared sounds like the rate of change of the velocity, which has a name which is the acceleration. So when you take two derivatives, you end up getting the acceleration. And we'll talk about the significance. What does that even mean? And we'll talk about that on the next page here. So what I think we should do is I think we should take the derivative of this. So the derivative of s of t, we can say s prime, but I'm going to call it v of t. And we use the shortcuts. So look at this. This is going to be the three jumps down. So this is negative 3t squared. And then we have plus 6t. And then we have plus 9. Of course, the, the constant, the derivative of the constant is 0. Okay. It seems like from when I started this video, it's getting brighter. The smoke is... It's burning off or something. It still smells very smoky. There's all these fires happening as I'm doing this video. I mean, not, not like really close to me, but it's happening in California. So there is the velocity function. So let's go ahead and hit this with another derivative, and that will give me the acceleration function. So um, velocity function. So it says find the bug's velocity at t seconds. There it is. Find the bug's acceleration at t seconds. Well, I'm going to hit this with another derivative. So this is a of t, which equals, we take the derivative of this, which is negative 6t. And we go over here. The derivative of 6t is just 6. So I have plus 6. There's the acceleration function. This gives you the acceleration at any time. What is the acceleration? We'll, we'll get into that. Now, here's the other thing to realize is that this guy right here is S prime. And this guy right here is S double prime. We could also say that this guy is V prime if you'd like. I mean, this is V prime. Maybe I'm being too confusing. Um, but that is, this is a second derivative of the position function. And so we have the first two problems done. And now let's go ahead and do the next problem where we're filling in this table. So problem number three, we have the position function, the velocity function, and the acceleration function. And we did these guys in the last two problems and it says at t seconds so here's some times here is the bug speeding up slowing down or neither so before we get moving with this and talk about speeding up and slowing down etc what we want to um, do is fill in this table and we want to put zero into the velocity when I put zero into the velocity, I end up getting nine. So that's nine feet per second. Put zero into the acceleration, that's six. So I'm going to take a little time. You might pause the video and see if you can fill in those boxes. Okay, so I put two in there. I end up getting negative 12 plus 12 plus 9, so I end up getting a 9. And I put 2 in there. That gives me a negative 6. I put 4 into the velocity, and that's going to give me negative 15. I put 4 into the acceleration, and it looks like it's going to be negative 18. Negative 2 goes into the velocity, so you know that's negative 12, negative, and plus 9 is negative 15. 
negative 2 goes into the acceleration. So that gives me 12. 6 is 18. 1 goes into the velocity. So that's 15 minus 3 is 12. I'm mumbling here. And then we have um, 1 goes there, which is 0. 3 goes into the velocity. We have tw negative 27 plus 18 plus 9. So that's 0. And 3 goes into the acceleration. This gives me negative 12. Okay, and so I have written out the units um, because I would have taken a long time to write that all out. And they are asking, at like time zero is the bug, speeding up, slowing down, or neither. So we have to figure that out. So what are we going to do? Let's talk about positive acceleration. Positive acceleration. Positive acceleration means it's the rate of change on the velocity. It means that the velocity is increasing. It's getting more. So if the velocity if we have positive acceleration when the velocity is 10 feet per second, then perhaps a split second before, if we have positive acceleration, it should be a little less than that, and a split second after it should be a little more than that. So let's talk about this first situation where the velocity is 9 and the acceleration is 6 feet per second squared. Okay, so what we have here, let's just put this arrow right here. This arrow represents, we'll just say it represents the speed. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going through this, filling out the answers here, and then at the very end down here we'll have a really quick way of doing these problems. But if I just give you the recipe, well, some of you might just fast forward to that. Um, there will be a few of you who will say, well, where did that recipe come from? So I'm going to try to explain where the recipe that we don't have yet, we're going to derive the recipe. So let's just say this is 9 feet per second. Okay, a snapshot, like a split second before, second before, um, in terms of acceleration, we have positive acceleration, which means the velocity is increasing. So maybe a split second before the arrow, in terms of the speed, it wasn't as fast. Okay, I'm not saying that this is the number line and he's, and he's here and then he's here. I'm just saying this kind of represents, you know, maybe at negative 0.1 second. And then at 0.1 second, after zero seconds, since his acceleration is positive, his velocity a little after zero seconds will be will be greater. The velocity is increasing, so it it kind of looks like this. So if this the um, length of the arrow represents the speed, it looks as if the bug is speeding up. So let's put that down. Speeding up. Okay, let's go do another one. The velocity is 9. It's a positive velocity. So the reason, you know, I may have not explained it here. The reason I made the arrow go to the right is because when the velocity is positive, the bug is traveling to the right. So the velocity is 9. But the acceleration is negative 6. The acceleration is negative, which means, okay, let's write this down. Negative acceleration means the velocity is decreasing. It's getting less. So, you know, like a split second after two seconds, 
if the velocity is getting less than a little after, it's going to look like this. And if the velocity is getting less than maybe a split second before two seconds, the velocity looks like that. Okay. Now, of course, the magnitude of those arrows represents sort of the speed. So what's happening here? I mean, this looks fast and then a little slower and then a little slower. This bug is slowing down at two seconds. Now, let me just emphasize, when you do your homework, you probably don't want to do it this way because we're going to try to see some sort of pattern here which will make answering this question a lot simpler than what I'm doing right here. And now it gets a little more confusing. The velocity is negative, negative 15, which means I'm going to make the arrow point to the other way. So this is right at four seconds, the middle one is. So there it is, negative 15. The acceleration is negative which means the velocity is decreasing. Now, what that means is the velocity is negative 15 feet per second at four seconds, and a little after four seconds, since the velocity is decreasing, decreasing means a number that's less than 15, which would be negative 16. So it's actually a longer arrow like a split second after four seconds. And if the acceleration is negative, which means the velocity is decreasing, that means it could be negative 15 at four seconds, but a little before four seconds, it would have to be like negative 12 or something that has a shorter arrow. So like, let's just say, I'm just making these numbers up. Okay, so this is negative 12, Here's the negative 15, and then this is like negative 17 or something. Um, the velocity is decreasing. It's becoming more and more negative. But now look what happens. Or this is sort of a time lapse. Um, the velocity is negative. The speed is kind of small, and then it's getting bigger, and then it's getting bigger, which means on this situation when the velocity and the acceleration are both negative, the bug is speeding up. Now it's speeding up to the left. Okay, so the negative velocity is a little bit harder to understand, but all it means is, is you're going to the left. So here's another negative velocity, and let's just call it negative 15 and what it is there. But the acceleration is positive, which means the velocity is increasing. Well, increasing means, okay, so let's just do a split second after negative two seconds. Increasing means that the next error I have to have is something that is a little greater than negative 15. What's a little greater than negative 15? Well, think about the number line negative 14, which looks like this. And then if you look at a, a split second before that time, it's going to be like even a longer arrow. Okay, because look what's happening to the velocity. It might be like negative 17, and then here's the negative 15, and then negative 14, which means the velocity is increasing. When I said negative 17, negative 15, negative 14, that is increasing. Um, why do I know it's increasing? Because the acceleration is positive. And so what's happening to my arrows? They're getting smaller and smaller and the length of the arrow sort of represents the speed. So it's not speeding up. Here's a snapshot a, a split second before and then at the present time and then a split second after. We are slowing down at time negative two. Okay, one second. Now look what we have here. We have the acceleration is zero. The velocity is 12 feet per second, so it's, let's just, it's positive, so I'll make it go this way. If the acceleration is zero, 
that means the velocity is not increasing, the velocity is not decreasing, which means a split second after, the speed looks the same. So those are supposed to be the same length. And um, let's see, a split second before, it's about the same size, which means, you know, so this is what happens when your acceleration is zero. The acceleration being the change in the velocity. The velocity is 12, 12, 12. So it's not speeding up, it's not slowing down. We say neither. Okay, our last example is when the velocity is zero, but the acceleration is like a negative 12. The velocity zero means the bug is at rest. Now, how do I represent that using an arrow? I can't, I'm gonna put a dot there. <laughs> so that's the bug at rest, that is three seconds. Now, the acceleration is negative means the velocity is decreasing, which means A split second after three seconds, if the velocity is decreasing, then it goes from zero to like negative one or negative point one. So a split second after, it's going to the left. But a split second before three seconds, if the acceleration is negative, it means the velocity is a little positive number. So this could be like, okay, let me just go ahead and say the three velocities, and I'm just making this up. 0.3 feet per second, zero feet per second, negative 0.3 feet per second. So I went 0.3, zero, negative 0.3, that's decreasing. So negative acceleration, the velocity is decreasing. Is it speeding up? slowing down or neither. Well, this one's a little confusing because like the split second before it hits three seconds, it looks like it is slowing down. I mean, you could maybe put the arrow, maybe uh, two split seconds before the arrow is like this, it's longer. And then same with two sp split seconds after. And so what, what happens is the bug is slowing down, comes to rest at three seconds, and then starts speeding up in the other direction. So if you're slowing down one way and you're speeding up the other way, when the bug is at rest, you're neither speeding up nor slowing down. So this one's also a neither. That one's kind of a hard one to understand, but you can sit there and think about these things. This is a good thing to think about, like as you're trying to get to sleep tonight. That was a pretty stupid thing I just said. But oh well, I mean, you can. I used to have a teacher that when things didn't make sense and it was in a higher math class, he's all, you go home and you think about it and uh, if you think really hard, you will see that I'm right. And we're all like, right. Okay, thank you for that insight. So he used to always say that. Maybe I should say that, but mm, sleep on it. I mean, that's something you can sleep on. Now, here's the deal. Whoa, <laughs> what's happening here? Getting green ink everywhere. The deal is, there's gotta be a better way of doing these problems. We're not sitting here drawing arrows that represent the speeds and you know. So, so what is a good way of doing this? Let's look at all the times where we're speeding up. And I'll circle them in green. Speeding up, speeding up. Okay, when we're speeding up, notice we have the case where the velocity is positive and the acceleration is positive, speeding up. And then we also have velocity negative, acceleration negative, speeding up. So it almost seems like they have to have the same sign for you to speed up. And slowing down, let me circle that in red, all the slowing down ones. Look at your velocity and acceleration. Velocity positive, acceleration negative, slowing down. Velocity negative, acceleration positive, slowing down. So when the signs are different, it slows down. And when the signs are the same, 
it speeds up. So how can we capture that mathematically so it's beautiful? I'll show it to you. V times A is greater than zero, means that you are speeding up. Whereas V times A is less than zero, which means it's negative, and that, that kind of makes sense, negative 15 times 18 is negative, 9 times negative 6 is negative, then it's slowing down. So instead of sitting there pulling out, I, I don't know how to spell down, I think there's an N. Okay, come on, white out. Oh, look, I got the O. Slow it down. Okay. So there it is. So we don't have to draw all these arrows and go crazy. We can just do that. Now, I did leave off one situation, and let's see if I have a purple one. Was the neither. And so neither happens when at least one of those guys is zero. So a nice way to capture that is when V times A equals zero then you are doing neither. You're not speeding up, you're not slowing down. That right there, this right here, is the gold. And so if, had we known that right from the beginning, we wouldn't have to draw all this. And we could just go, oh, look at that. Um, if you multiply those together, it's positive. So speeding up. So when you do your homework, it should be a lot faster than what I did here. But if I just gave you the recipe, I'd get emails from a few of you saying, hey, why is that so? Why is this true? And so I tried to justify it. Well, this completes this bug section. You guys do your homework and I'll see you in the next video.